Hi, so I have just realised that I was looking through my YouTube channel and looking back and forgetting that I'd started my YouTube channel as a video diary to um, talk about my process through being transgender. Um, and if you look back through, you can see that I was still very much learning my face and drag helped me massively to do that. Um, learning makeup and where to apply things quite heavily and then just subtly doing them. Um, so it's been like two years um, this year since I uh, accepted and came out and, um, and it has been an amazing journey. I um, have to say I, I yeah, I'm in a, in, a, in a good place but at the moment things are so down due to the pandemic. Um, but I thought it'd be nice to just show you who I am now because um, as you can see from some of the videos before it's got my alter egos and performing um, and I guess from what I was from the first video on my channel and how I look now is very very different so I thought I would just show a little bit of who, who I actually am um, in the flesh again. Um, so I've changed my business name to Mr Hair um, after the last lockdown. Um, I was able to um, yeah change my name by deep hole, but I did all that this year. I learned that I didn't need to buy as many certificates as I did buy. I think I bought eight. I only really needed two. Um, so that's a handy hint for anyone that is going through changing their names. Um, you know, don't don't buy loads. <laughs> um, but I have since found out um, before this lockdown about a week or two before. I wanted to ring up and go private because I knew that I was already held back by my doctor. I had um, I went in the November and then they didn't refer me until the February. Um, and then with the pandemic, so I was already sort of, I'm about eight months behind from when I first came out. So I thought I would try and speed things up by going private. So I rang up to have a stock and they then told me that it wouldn't make a difference. Um, because it's now a 36 month waiting list. And I was really upset by this because I was like, well, why didn't, why wasn't I informed? Because I'm coming up to what should be the end um, of my two years. <laughs> and to find out that I'm only actually halfway through. So as I'm sure you guys can imagine, I was absolutely devastated. So yeah, that was quite hard to take. Um, I ended up going out getting trashed that night because it was, it was a bit of a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> Not a hormone pill. <laughs> um, so, so there have been some hiccups along the way, but through the last lockdown, I very much got to build up my self-esteem and learn to love me within inside myself. And I definitely know I'm on the right track and realise that, you know, like things wearing, you know, how I, I, I was realising that I was trying to still dress and perceive for others rather than myself. So I've stopped wearing um, my prosthetic boobs. I'm not really that fussed on my boobs. And, and, you know, if you had asked me or I had the option when I first came out, I would have gone like double Ds, <laughs> um, you know, and I would have gone a bit crazy. So I do appreciate the two year waiting list. And, and getting to know myself, I'm still very upset that there's l such a lack of um, community and help or help offered to to um, people who are going through the transition or waiting for their first appointment. There's no, uh, you're kind of left on your own to find and tread the water and find your own support. That led me to um, setting up a support network in Chichester. Um, which has been really good and we do a lot of Zoom meetings through the lockdown and uh, these times where we can't socialise as much as we would all like to. Um, but it's been going well and we had set up, we were due to have our first Tutor Surprise this year on August the 15th, but again, uh, the pandemic put an end to that. Um, so, but I just, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, a lot. I found that, um, uh, so like sexually, um, there is such a huge taboo still with being trans. Um, yeah, if anything, you know, I've had a bit more action for, since I came out. Um, and at the beginning it was very exciting and, and I was able to have sex sober. Like I've never, um, as a man, I found it very difficult to have sex. I didn't know where my place was while having sex and I was an active guy. Um, so that was... Um, 
So that's been quite interesting. And then I started realising it was a bit like a drug and I was starting to feel really low in myself um, each time after having hookups. So I slowed that down massively. Um, and it made me realise like, a lot of guys still would be like, you know, I'm not gay. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, like, neither am I. <laughs> but because I still have a penis, I guess that's still seen as, uh, I'm, they're still seeing me as a man or a chick with a dick. But what it has also made me realise is that there is a label that hasn't been introduced or, or acknowledged yet, that there are people out there that do like chicks with dicks. <laughs> um, and not that you should have to label yourself, but with there being so many labels, it must be very, very hard for guys who, who have had that orientation and aren't able to express themselves. And there is still a fear. There is still a huge fear. I mean, in the bedroom, absolutely fine guys are great in those four walls, but would they be seen holding hands um, out in public? No. So there is still a huge taboo and a huge fetish um, within the trans community. Um, I don't know if it's the same for female to male, um, but especially within male to female. Um, so yeah, so that's been interesting. So I've learned quite a lot through that and um, trying to, it's hard because, you know, I want to love and be loved. So you can't put a stop to trying to meet up guys and hope that one of them, or that somebody will see things differently. But unfortunately that hasn't happened as of yet. And I live in a very small village, so it's not, um, everyone's covered up. So it's not like my pool of people is is, is vast. Um, so, so yeah, but everything after, when I finished doing my last videos, Life started just getting very good and and work was going really, really well. Um, you know, I had a lot to contend with. Um, I worked just by myself and I have a helper now, which I find much easier. Um, not that they were any problem or anything like that, but actually just, I'm not very good at being a boss or managing. I'm just good at, I struggle to manage myself. So, um, so everything's been going really, really well, actually. Um, but now from this second lockdown, I was, I'm not going to be able to afford to go private until next year, hopefully until I've raised my funds again. So that's put another spanner in the works. But, you know, I have to just keep thinking, I'm happy, people are great with me. Um, so, yeah, I haven't got a lot to worry about. What I would like to have next, though, is, um, is facial hair removal and body hair. Like, I, I like going through the grueling daily routine of shaving it takes me 15 minutes a day just to shave my face, let alone do my body. And even now it's quarter past two, I can start to hear the shaving and that. Um, but yeah, on a whole, you know, it has, it's been a really, really great, a great um, two years. It really has. And there are just are always gonna be hiccups. Um, and that's where it would have been really lovely to have had um, support. So Facebook, there were lots of groups on there but um, it's not quite the same as maybe having a meetup or having, you know, being able to talk openly. Um, so yeah, but yeah, <laughs> anyway. But so I just thought, yeah, I thought it'd be, it'd be nice to come in and just show my face as I am now and, and how much I've grown as a human and how important it is to value yourself because expecting value from others isn't always possible or, um, you know, and it's not always unintentional that people are, it's not always intentional that people are meaning to not give you support or value you, um, but no one's a mind reader and nobody knows how to treat you other than you know how to treat yourself. So it's incredibly important to love yourself. There have been a lot of, um, I've heard something recently of someone trying to sue the Tavistock for not going through the, um, um, psychological process more thoroughly. I mean, it must be really hard. I don't quite know how how you know because if if you're in a mindset at the time, you know, I, I don't I don't know their story, and it's very important that everyone understands that everyone's story is different. We might go through similar um, scenarios and similar um, experiences, but you know, nothing is textbook. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I think, yeah, I just wanted to come and just touch base and um, and maybe yeah, catch up because a lot has happened since then. Um, and yeah, I just leave it there. But please subscribe if you like 
seeing my journey and also if you like seeing me and my legs out and my dance routines and oh the editing it takes hours but I just love it especially through lockdown it's something I can just do on my own and, and tap into my creative side um, and also it's, it's like I can be the star of my own show <laughs> so I bloody love it um, but yeah that I do have some Facebook pages and Instagrams and, and things like that but I've also come off social media quite a bit, um, especially I, I watched The Social Dilemma um, two weeks before the last this current lockdown and I did a 20 day ban of my own and it made such a difference to not being influenced by other people or, um, you know, fake news and things like that and just get to, just get in touch with yourself, it's really important. Um, I think that's the biggest amount of advice I could give to anybody, not just people who are trans, um, you've got to learn to value yourself and that is the most, if you're happy with who you are and what, what journey you're on, then fantastic and if you're not then you've got to look at how you change. Um, you know, humans, we are imperfect, uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, it depends on what perspective you look at it. But um, yeah, please hit the subscribe button and you know, do share if you think anything I've like um, contributed is helpful to anyone else but um yeah keep safe keep safe <laughs> keep safe and uh, i'll see you all soon or you'll see me very soon